Chris and Rob, you guys have strong disagreement over Best Supporting Drama Actress. Uh, Boomer, you're picking Sharon Gless. She is, of course, an Emmy darling, but she's in Burn Notice. This is a kind of crime procedural that doesn't normally get Emmy love. What are you thinking here? Well, I, I looked at all the episodes in this category, and nobody is nobody overwhelms you. I mean, it's not a good group of episodes, really. I don't think, um, and I wouldn't call Sharing Glass's episode all that great. But the Emmys in this category alone really love veteran actresses. I mean, other than I guess Catherine Heigl and uh, uh, Drea De Matteo from The Sopranos, the last dozen years or so has been almost all veteran actresses, and she and Christine Baranski are really the only ones I would call veterans in this category, um, and they also love emotion. I mean, even like Cherry Jones last year as the president, she was, you know, angry, and she was crying, and she was very emotional. Uh, when Katherine Heigl won, she was crying a whole lot in her episode. The only one with any emotion whatsoever in their in this uh, category is Sharon Glass, so she had two big things going for her, and I just thought, you know, as weird as this sounds, Burn Notice actually winning a major Emmy. Uh, when it's a good show, but it's a popcorn show, um, I just feel like maybe she's going to take this one. She doesn't have a lot of screen time, though. I know what you're saying about the, the emotional impact of the performance. We have a scene where she's being interrogated at home by, by the FBI, I think it is, about the location of her son, and she gets she's smoking a cigarette, and she's dabbing it out, and, and uh, you see a mother's anguish nicely portrayed, but still not a lot of screen time, which she said to me, by the way, I was in her presence when she saw that episode for the first time because we showed it as part of the Envelope screening series, and she said it so. You know, I, I thought I had more face time than that. Rob, you're going for Christina Hendricks, though. Come on, she's not exactly regarded widely as a grand dramatic actress, but you think she gives the best shot here to win? Absolutely, Tom. Um, Why? Because... Well, I was very strict when I watched this category. I watched every episode, edited down to the scenes, in, a row, in, the, in the proper order, in one sitting, and it just had the most impact for me. And that's probably because um, I just think the, her scenes, the way they were written, perhaps, and maybe because the quality of the show itself, it just stood head over heels um, over Sharon Glass's episode. And Give me an no example. What, what, is, what in that episode really jumps out? Well... That's one of the uh, highlight episodes of Mad Men's third season. Guy walks into an advertising agency where that uh, ad exec from the UK has his foot run over by a lawnmower. And so Christina Hendricks has a scene where she plays the, uh, the caring, doting uh, female character. And then she has another scene with her husband um, in her apartment where she uh, takes care of him and, and, and he's really strong. And then she has another scene towards the end with... Um, Don Draper in the hospital where she's her dress is soaking in blood and you know, and you can see how exhausted she is and she's tender and, and she's real and, and even innocent and anyone who knows that character knows that Joan is sassy and Joan is out there and outspoken and independent and so she sh she just showed uh, various colours and uh, and shades to her character and I was completely mesmerised by her and I don't think I'm going to be the only one and I know for a fact for just from reading articles that. Um, she, people love her, they love her character, and they always talk about her. She's almost like an it girl now because of maybe the way she looks or maybe, um, you know, the, the fact that she's in a lot of magazines. And I just think it might be her time for a young ingenue, I guess, to uh, come out and, and win this trophy over a veteran like Sharon Gless, who is in a show that I think is not as good as Mad Men. It's kind of, it, it's, um, it's got, it's got really terrible music, terrible dialogue, bad <laughs> you've, acting. You've got her in fifth place. Do you, out of six contenders, yeah. do you really think Sharon Glass has that little chance to win? I just don't think Emmy voters are going to vote for Burn Notice, and I think she she received the nomination because she is the best performer on the show, and she's a well known actress. She's a vet, and she's uh, she gives good performances, and and people respect her, and and she deserves the nomination, but. They're not going to give the Emmy to Burn Notice. It's not 24. You know, it's not a show that they've given other awards to. It's just this show that's come out of nowhere on USA Network. So she's not even in second for me. And and uh, we'll talk about this in a second, I guess. But Chris and I do have the same uh, actress in second place, and um, we're, we're probably similar with our other um, rankings as well. So it's really just a Sharon-Christina dichotomy that we just don't seem to agree on. 
Uh, well, back what do you to uh, Christina, if we're just well, back to Christina though. You talked about her being strong and being solid and all, but she has no emotion at all, and that's I mean that's a, that's that's the that's the benefit of her character in this episode is that she is the strong one. She is the one that's the least emotional in the office, and that's why she's the go-to person on on a couple of these situations. Even at home, if they had just let her. You let her guard down a little bit when her husband uh, breaks the bad news to her. I mean, it, there's if they're going to give an award to a lady on Mad Men, I think it's going to be Elizabeth Moss over Christina Hendricks. She's much more widely regarded as an, as an actress. I mean, she was even nominated for lead last year, kind of surprisingly, and has been nominated separately at SAG. So I think if they were really looking for something for Mad Men, I think they'd go with the other, uh, with Elizabeth. I don't. I don't think that there's no emotion showing in her performance at all. I think it's all in her face. It's all unsaid. It's understated. Um, I think it's beautifully nuanced performance. And I think if people are paying attention and if people already like her, then this is just going to give them another reason to put a big ticket ne- next to her name. So I, I, I don't agree with that. I think her, the emotion is there. She doesn't scream and cry and throw things, but um, it's all there. It's just more understated. That's how. Well, I name, see. name me name me the last perf- understated performance that won an Emmy. <laughs> Yeah, oh, good point. Good point. Yeah, look, I know. I know. I know what you're saying. They, they, just, don't, they don't look at. I mean, they don't. They don't like nuance. They like crying and drama, at least. They like crying and anger. And I, I just don't see it. I, I like Christina a lot. I, I've, I've met her in person before. She's a, a nice, nice lady. But I just, if, if anything, I think her looks work against her as an actress. In, a, in an awards situation, I, I don't know. Now, you were mentioning Christina, uh, Christine Baranski a moment ago. Maybe both of us are undervaluing her a little bit here. I mean, yeah. she she's she's an Emmy winner in the past and uh, yeah. has been nominated Absolutely. quite a few other times. So we both got her in second place. Yeah, but you yes, both also admit that she doesn't have a lot of emotional range in her episode, right? So why did you both put her Baranski number two? Well, I put her there because um, she. She does have a few good scenes. Like she shows, some, she does show some range, Tom. Like she has some scenes in court where she kind of takes over the court and she, and she wins the um, <clears throat> the trial. She has some fantastic chemistry with Gary Cole, her love interest on the show. Um, they they work beautifully together, and her scenes with him are perfect. And uh, she's very likable. And maybe she doesn't scream and cry and throw things across the room like some of the other actresses might do, but. Um, She's well respected. She's doing drama here, not comedy that she's more renowned for. And I thought I really was going to put her first, and then really toss it up between her and Christina. So yeah, got her at second also because uh, voters love courtroom performances. They always have, all the way back to what the Defenders and Perry Mason, and all the way up through you know the practice in Boston Legal. So um, while, while she doesn't have a lot of emotion, doesn't get long speeches or anything, uh, she is real, uh, very solid, and, and another veteran actress. So um, you know she's got a very, very good shot at winning this. Elizabeth Moss dropped down to supporting from lead because she wanted her co-star January Jones, uh, we believe that was the reason, to, to get a nomination in the lead, which happened. But I think if you just looked at this category as an awards nut without any understanding at all of what episodes were submitted to the judges, you would probably say this race is between Elizabeth Moss and Rose Byrne. You guys have Elizabeth Moss in third place and Rose Byrne both in last. Why? Yeah, that's right. Well, can, I'll just talk about Rose, Chris, and um, maybe you might want to talk about Elizabeth. But um, Rose Byrne, big favourite of mine. She's Australian, so I should I should just be picking her anyway. But her episode is is so woefully bad. She's barely in it. In fact, I was I wanted to go through the TV and shake her just to see if she was in a coma because she what does she do in that? I don't know what she was thinking. I think she um is one of those people who doesn't want to win awards because they're not cool or. She doesn't want to be seen to be wanting to win an award, so she picked the worst episode out of the 13 and, uh, and, and presented that to the judges, where she basically just walks around uh, with you know, nothing behind her eyes. And if she wins, then I'm just going to turn the TV off because that, that, that one will just be completely inexplicable. Yeah, Rose, uh, I have this feeling that the FX folks... She just said, "Choose what you want to choose," and and they, you know, the show was canceled, and they didn't care anymore, and and yeah. they just chose they just chose the premiere episode because Glenn Close is okay in it. She's always got a shot at winning, even though this is not her best either. Uh, but Rose Byrne, she's more transitional in the episode. She kind of sets up 
you know, one scene leading to the next. Um, you know, she doesn't, there's only one moment in the whole episode that she has any kind of um, acting ability at all, and that's with her scene with Glenn Close uh, in the restroom where they haven't seen each other in a long time. And that's like 20 seconds, 30 seconds at the most. Uh, okay. Back to Elizabeth Moss. I had her in first place going into watching the episodes. I thought, yeah, again, you know, with her being in lead last year, there's already, um, they, they already like her a lot. They already uh, have, have nominated her before. And, um, uh, it's, it's a good episode. Uh, she can win for it. David, I think if she, if she walks up on stage, it's more because they like her overall than this particular episode. Uh, she, it's kind of a sad performance. She's, she, her love life is she's trying to figure out who she is basically, and uh, but it's it's a it's restrained, which uh, is good for Mad Men. I mean that's that's kind of the, the kind of show it is. But again, I don't know that that's going to be the kind of episode they reward. Yeah, uh, damage is, is not canceled. We have to you know it, it's everyone thought it was yeah. canceled uh, just a few weeks ago, but now it looks like they're going to be resurrecting it. Lastly, in this category, I'm always surprised at the fanatical fan support that Archie. Penjabi, am I pronouncing her name correctly, gets. Yes. Uh, let's, let's talk about her. You've got her in fourth and fifth place. No shot here, realistically, yeah. to win? No, no, no real shot because of the episode. Again, if anyone who watches this show knows that Archie Punjabi is um, the highlight of every episode, she's, for me, now that I've watched the whole show after our last chat, um, I always look forward to her performance. Um, but it's very understated. And she never has an episode where she takes centre stage and she has the spotlight and she gets to emote and throw things across the room, like I always like to say. Um, she is fantastic, though. She's very sexy, very mysterious, and um, I can see why fans absolutely adore her, but her episode, yet again, she really barely does anything, um, and so she's only going to get some votes based on the, the popularity and not the performance, I think. Yeah, you know, she's an investigator on the show, so most of her performance on most episodes is uh, very uh, reactionary. You know, she's getting information, she's passing along information. She does have a really good scene on the courtroom stand uh, where she's, um, you know, potentially going to say something really bad about the judge who's sitting right next to her, uh, but she's holding it back. So it's 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 understated, and, and you know, it, it probably was her best choice for the season, but... Um, it, it, I don't think if they're going to choose somebody from the Good Wife, it's going to be Baranski, I think. So yeah. basically, we have to admit we don't know who's going to win this race, right? Uh, <laughs> this is all over this the one's place. This a killer. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a tough one. It really is a it's tough. It's really one. tough. Really tough. 